What's one skill you know for sure that you can teach one person? It, think about it, really. And a lot of times we do things that we don't necessarily think of them as skills. What if you actually got people, multiple people, to sit down in front of you in a room, virtually or in person, to actually learn that skill from you? It's insane. And that's exactly what happened to me recently. I just held my my biggest workshop ever. I've done several workshops in the past, and it's not this is not the biggest because of how many people showed up, or nor is it the biggest because of how much money I made. It's the biggest because I had so much knowledge and experience to give. That's what made it the biggest. This was so impactful. I felt like I was giving a lot. And I love that because these people, the information that I was giving, these were the right people for that. I had people who have a podcast. I have someone who owns a photography and content creation studio that's like right down the street from where I live. I have people who are starting their business ventures. I have teachers and psychologists who have been doing the craft for over 16 years. I it's these people have amazing talents and skills to share, and they wanted to learn something from me. It, it was just, it was, it was amazing. And I want to talk about it. I want to talk about my experience at my biggest workshop ever. But before I do that, I want to give a big shout out to CoSpace. CoSpace actually helped, not only allowed me to conduct the workshop at their venue, but actually helped facilitate it by uh, helping me with promotions and the graphics and getting the word out there. It joy from CoSpace was is a joy to work with. It was amazing. I don't think that the workshop would be what it is without CoSpace. It was just spectacular. It, it the workshop would be non-existent without CoSpace. So thank you, Joy. Thank you, Enola, for helping this come to life. Because this was th- this was y'all workshop as well as his mind. It it, it was our work. It was CoSpace's workshop. It was amazing. So I just wanted to say that. So if you're in the Miami area and you are looking for a place to collaborate, learn, grow, network, uh, share your business, share share your thoughts and ideas, or just, you just want coffee. You just want to stop by and grab some amazing coffee. You can do that too. So check out CoSpace is located in Miami Gardens. I'll leave a link in the description. And you can uh, get all that. So let's continue on with my workshop. So the way that I, in my mind, we had, that I had set up the workshop, I wanted folks to actually come in and have different scenarios. I wanted them to, I had my old 2019 MacBook Pro with two microphones, two short SM7Bs with a Fafine mic that was a USB mic. And the thought process there was, I want the students to actually sit down on a mock podcast setup and have headphones and monitor their audio and see how they sound in the microphone, check out the proximity effect. Um, Speaking of proximity, I'm actually using the Electro Voice RE20 for the first time. This is actually my first time using it. Let me know how it sounds versus the Shure SM7B. This is a legendary microphone and I have a legendary voice. So let's see how these two legendary contenders combine together. Maybe they, maybe something magical happens. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of this audio? Does it sound good? This, this, this microphone's amazing. Uh, this is actually, I think this is the same microphone that's on the show Fraser. So if you're old like me, you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, so the thought process was I'll have this old laptop just stationed in the in the far corner of the room and the students will come by there and mess around with it and hear themselves. So then I made everybody had a turn to record a quick little session and just hear how they sound on the microphone, show them proximity effect. And then I, I rigged it. I made everybody like turn around, cover their eyes, and then I rigged it. So I showed them how to use a roadcaster, muting and gain knobs and all that. 
and I told him, find out what the problem is. So I rigged the setup. Eventually, uh, one of the persons, Enola, she figured it out. She was like, I think channel two is unplugged. They checked the back of the Rodecaster Pro one. And of course it was unplugged, but then they couldn't, but then she went on and said, but and all the microphones are muted. Um, so that was pretty fun to, to show them. Then I have another station, which is the iMac. The iMac station was in front of the room at, in CoSpace, and that had uh, Ecamm, Ecamm Live running with two camera angles. And I, the camera was connected, the HDMI was connected to an ATEM and the Extreme ISO. The ATEM was connected to my iMac, and it showed both camera angles. And the students were just mind blown how simple the setup was and it was just because the the thing is they walked in there not knowing and understanding or how to conceptualize how to connect a camera to their computer plus the microphone but then by the end of the workshop or near the end they had a general idea and it's crazy because i started creating content like years ago and that idea and that concept took forever for me to like wrap my head around. And because I had already did the work, I've done the, the research, I've done the hard work for them. They were able to just get in and get out and understand everything. It, w- it was really impressive. Um, I'm not going to say they understood everything because some things were still very difficult for them to understand. And it was 12 to 3. So we started at around noon and we wrapped up around like 3.30. So it was a decent amount of time. I still think we needed more time because there were a lot of other things that I wanted to go over. And there were some things that I went over that I I did not put in the syllabus because somebody asked the question. One of the gentlemen uh, in the workshop, he has a business and in his business, there's a majority Spanish speaking clients or prospects. And he wants to create content, but he wants to be able to uh, communicate with his, with his audience. And his audience is just Spanish speaking people, uh, mostly. And I showed him something amazing in CapCut. So I recorded a video a couple of days ago and I went to CapCut and I did the really cool feature, which is voice translator. So the using the CapCuts AI, it takes my tonality, my voice. So the thing is, I, I told them, hey, I'm about to change the voice here. We're going to click here. I had my MacBook Pro 14 inch air playing. So wirelessly transmitting the video, uh, whatever is on the monitor, on my com- computer monitor to the Tila TV in CoSpace, which is amazing. If you want to do a workshop presentation, anything, they have everything you need. Like, I, I'm not going to say I suffer from anxiety, (laughs) but I can get a little bit anxious and to be able to have all the tools I need to succeed, all the tools I need to express myself, create, like creatively express myself. I don't know (laughs) in, in any type of capacity, anything that I needed, I had it there and it was amazing. Um, so I was able to transmit the video or share the screen or mirror the screen. I should say not transmit mirror the screen. That's the proper term and show them how I'm able to turn my voice from English to Spanish. And the, the thing is, it's not that it's fancy that it did it right. And that's the thing, like, um, you know, it's not fancy that it can change my, it could change the audio into Spanish. That, okay, cool. Of course, AI, we're living in 2026. You know, let's just just add two more years, right? Of course, it can change your voice into Spanish. What what made everybody like amazed was the fact that I showed them that CapCut not only changes my voice into Spanish, but it changes my voice into Spanish. And you have to understand, like, I'll show a clip here. Quiero mostrarte esta cámara realmente genial, una configuración de micrófono que definitivamente podrían robar. Mira esto. Así que este es el micrófono que estamos usando para la configuración. Este es el Shure SM7 Bytes y esta es la cámara que estamos usando. 
Un Sony 174 con un objetivo de 50,000 mm. That's my voice, my tonality, my inflections. And the following day, I had a one-on-one -on -one consultation with a Spanish-speaking client. And I showed them this clip. And they, they literally said, hablo español? And I was like, that's not me. Oh, uh, um, okay. I mean, I'm so confused here. I was like, that's AI. It translated my voice. So I showed them that, that kind of like, they were amazed. And then I kind of went into a small cap cut little tutorial showing them how to generate clips and I also kind of went into Riverside. So they were a little bit, it, it was, it was a little bit of a detour, but I just kind of want to show them how powerful cap cut was. Um, so we kind of went over camera switching, different camera angles and how that looks, but also cameras in general. Uh, I kind of went over full frame versus crop sensor just a little bit, not a lot. Because right now, just to be honest, like there are crop sensor cameras that are amazing. And I don't own any, wait, I have some old crop sensor cameras. Um, if you don't know what a crop sensor camera is, um, I guess this is not the video for that, but it's definitely not a camera that I would personally use at the moment because I'm very, I really like full frame. I don't like to have to rearrange my, my room is already small. So for me, if you know, if you have a crop sensor camera, it's going to be cropped in a little bit more. I'm using a 50 millimeter right now, 50 millimeter F 1.4. And if it was cropped, I would have to like rearrange a room. And I like how I like the distance between the wall and me is perfect. Um, yeah. So I, I personally won't use a crop sensor camera, but if you are starting out and you want to learn crop sensor cameras, they're great. They're a great option. The ZVE 10 Mark II is a thousand dollars. I think if I was starting out and I really wanted to create, that'll be the camera that I'll get. If I knew nothing about photography and I have my uh, understanding of how things work and upgradability. You can swap lenses. I think that's the camera that I'll get. And then I'll probably get the A7C Mark II. Um, but, but yeah, um, that's, that probably be it. We, we then went on to, so we left, we, we worked on the computers. We swapped the camera angles. I made them touch everything. I made them unplug mics, plug HDMI. I made them test stuff. I made them hear their voice, which was like, it, it was be really beautiful because everybody there had an amazing voice. Um, there was a woman there named uh, Amanda. She, she has a very prolific, a th just a really great sound. I, she, it just felt like she was about to sing every time she spoke. I was like, oh wow, she's about to get, start singing. Uh, and she was very, irritated from her voice. Like she put on the headphones and she was like, Arr! when we replayed the, uh, the audio clip of her voice, she was like, Oh, cringe. And it was just amazing because I was the same way. <laughs> I was the exact same way many, many, many years ago. Um, but it was great. It, it was super good. Now I have formed a group chat with these people. Um, I kind of want to do another workshop so then I could like slowly build <laughs> more people in the group chat and it's extremely active uh, right now. Everybody in there is asking questions. It is just amazing. And, um, uh, just to be able to like collaborate and connect with like-minded people, people who are earnestly trying to create and they're putting their best foot forward, they're investing in themselves. And I don't want to bring money into it, but it's like, if you don't know anything, like you, 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 you want to and have to invest and put your best foot forward. Maybe like if I wanted to like be a podcaster, I'd probably have to buy a microphone. Um, and I, you know, I'd buy a microphone. I mean, I could use my, you know, my phone's audio, you know, but I think it'd be better if I just invested in, um, myself. So, uh, and I'm so thankful that these people took their time, their hard-earned dollars and invested 
in themselves by coming to my podcast production workshop. And I'm definitely going to be doing another one soon. So stay tuned for that. I just kind of wanted to share some feelings that I had about the workshop. It's been like, I've been wanting to get it out. And this is probably the best and easiest way to do that. (laughs) So also, um, since this is like a podcast, right? I'm bringing back my podcast and I am doing seasons. So this is going to be, I have to figure out, I think this, my original episode runs, I think I'm like, I'm, I'm up there. I, I'm up there in numbers, but I have to stay consistent with it. So what I want to do is start with season two. So my next podcast episode will be season two and it'll be seven episodes. And it'll be seven episodes of audit podcast production. So it'll be like a whole podcast production set up. So episode one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they will all be perfectly organized um, and specifically made for podcast production. And I'm going to make a playlist on YouTube. And that season, season two, will just be podcast production. Uh, one to seven. And if there's any extra things that I want to add on to it, let's say that season is over, I'll just, I could just add it. I'll kind of treat it like a course. You know, I could just do that. I could just say, uh, you know, episode eight, part two or something of season two. I could just continue that. And then season three can just be about, um, I don't know what season three is going to be about yet but I probably want to just do cameras and they're just going to be seven episodes. So seven episodes. So like, I don't know how long the episodes are going to be. Maybe like an hour, 45 minutes. Y'all let me know. Um, but it'll be a very gear tech focused on that one thing. So episode one will, will definitely be about set design, understanding camera placement, lighting situation. So, where to put stuff and all that. And, um, in episode two, we'll probably go over to cameras and talk about full frame and then APS-C. So y'all can be focused instead of me being all over the place. It'll just be a focused episode about cameras, which camera to buy a list of cameras. And that'll be that. And the next episode will be about audio. Next episode will be about lighting and three point lighting and how to get lights, how to get the blurry why I'm using that? Like, why is, uh, wait, why is that light orange down there? Like, what is that? Like, what's the purpose? All that. Um, then episode four or whatever, it would be about one particular thing. Um, I figured that'll be a lot easier and it'll be easy for me to just promote it when someone, um, hits me up and says, Hey, what's like a, a good camera for this and that. And I'll send them an you know, Amazon link or whatever the case is. I'll just show them the a podcast playlist of camera setups how to use a camera how to use all that and all that cool stuff so thank you so much for tuning in um for suffering (laughs) uh, listening to me blab but i'm just super excited if you like this video um you know what to do that's it i'm just happy all right thank you peace